Tested, one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. Jonathan, Mel, Connie, everybody's here. Good job. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Connie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody, um, can you hear me okay? Give me a sound check, please. Just want to make sure we didn't screw it up this time. All right, let's do share screen. Ricky, good morning. Okay. Share screen to share. Beautiful. All right. An insane morning, obviously. The yields went, um, went up to uh, 142. Huge spike in yields, um, and that just killed the market. Um, drove us uh, really, really uh, hard down. It been, you know, honestly, been very, very tough to trade because the volatility has just been insane. And um, the kind of trades I do, where I'm just going for five points, um, you know, it's 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 been a crapshoot. But um, I do have like a very, very refined variant of what I'm trading, which I'm going to go through with you right now. Let's get, uh, hey, Mel, good morning. I'm just going to wait for everybody to, uh, where's my thing? Oh, there we go. Let me see who's in here. Okay. Everybody's here. Ready, Karen, Mel. Okay, beautiful. Jonathan. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you very, very slowly uh, the variant that I've been trading, which really works super well. But it requires a little bit of patience um, to, to trade well. And I'll explain to you kind of how I got into it. You know, I realized that when we're looking at all the, um, the continuation trade ideas, especially on, this is very much uh, true on the one minute chart, um, the single most important component of strong trend continuation is what I call the pull away from the moving average. Let's see if I can start to annotate my stuff here. Where's my, can I get my brush? I wonder if I can do this. Uh, oh, this sucks. Okay, delete. Uh, let's do highlighter. Let me find a tool that I can, highlighter. Okay. All right, so um, let's look at just sort of the first sequence of what, what is the start of a trend, right? The most, and this is, a, this is a downtrend analysis, obviously. The most important thing is that the high of the candle literally pulls away from the moving average and then doesn't come near it. You see how the highs of the candle never come touching it? That's a super, super strong indication that we have trend. This is so unnatural, I think, um, when we're looking at charts because you know, the natural temptation is, oh, it's been, it's sold so hard, it's going to bounce, right? We're always thinking it's going to bounce, when in fact, it's literally the single best signal that is going to go down in a strong trend, right? So the most important isolating element of, um, of finding an entry is to pull away, to pull, to pull away from moving average, meaning that the high of the of the candle on the short side does not touch the moving average, just as the low of the candle on the long side does not touch the moving average. You see that? It looks it looks like oh my god, it's gonna, it's going to stop any anytime soon. It's actually the beginning of the most a uh, high probability entry you could possibly have. So everybody sees what I'm showing you. Give me some yeses. I want to make sure that everybody's super clear on this move. Uh, and while we're looking at it, while we're looking at this, by the way, let's get our, where's my thing? Let's get, um, um, let's get working here because we're going to break the 1300s on the, on the futures right now. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to do this and um, let's see if we can just hold the low. I'm going to have to do this manually before I get into a, uh, if we, if we don't hold the low and I'm watching, I'm actually watching the futures because this is about five points um, above futures. So we can just do a close on, oh man, uh, 
So this would be a close on five. Oh, everything is frozen now. What's going on here? 10, so six. Okay, let's just say 1301. All right, I'm just leaving it like this because it's close enough to uh, to where I want to be. If we break if we if we break the lows of this on a closing basis, I think we're gonna trip the stops. I want to trade this. So so far we're kind of holding it. We trip we trip the stops, but you know we didn't uh, didn't quite break it. My futures are tr futures are trading all over the place. It's very very uh, uh, hard to see the. Um, Where's my futures? Oh no, futures trading 11, 12. My feed on my feed on again, my, my empty five feet is is uh um is collapsed. All right, so uh come on, empty five. Honestly, I'm just gonna turn off my empty five right now because it's just no no point. It's it's it in these fast markets, empty five really can't handle it. Looks like we're going down though. I'm looking at my trading view. So now we broke down. We broke the lows. Let's see what do we got. We got 16, 17 seconds. Let's see if this uh, this trade. Um, and I'm just going to see if I can go for five on this if it triggers. Let's see if this gives me the five. A lot of volatility, so we could have a big retrace back, but. It feels like it feels heavy, so well, maybe not. Um, the big break was what it just missed the break, like right here, my entry right over here. That was the big break. So I'm a little bit late. I'm a candle late, which may not work, but kind of still trying to give it a shot. Let's see if this works. Okay, so that worked. Um, I'm flying blind on my futures because because. And let me see if I can restart it on my other screen because just it seems that that MT5 is just. Let me try it on my other computer here too. Jesus. Let me guess these fast markets, MT5 just can't handle the uh okay. Yeah, so we yeah, we really broke hard um and we're pulling away. And by the way, this sort of again um in a in a slower, easier world, let me go in here, um shows. The, the element of um, pulling away from the, uh, see how this pulled away from the, from the moving average, this particular candle, that was a, that was a um, you know, great sell point. So basically you have this, this construct where it just pulls away. So it's just element number one, element number one of how you wanna analyze it, but by no means is it, is it your trigger point because the really um, proper way to, tr to trigger these kind of trades is you actually need to have, let me just see if I can get rid of this. You really need some patience because you can't, especially in slower, slower markets. Oh man, what's going on here? Oh, let me see if I do this. Ooh, wow, Jesus. Okay, sorry. Um, in slower markets, you know, like, like, I don't know, like here, um, I mean, it's not even a good example, but you know, here's a, here's a relatively um, slow, slow market. If you were sort of to enter on this candle, you're basically selling, selling the bottom right over here, right? Um, and in order to avoid, or if you, if you were entered, let's say I'm entering on this candle, you you basically buying the top. You actually would have made money on a, on a five tip, but just, you know, amuse me. Um, and let me explain to you why this is this is kind of wrong. The the thing that you want to do, the, you need you need an element of patience. Um, so you need three things to trade this kind of pull away uh, trade properly. You need first moving averages to cross to establish an actual establishment of trend signal, right? Then you need prices to come in and kiss the short term moving average. Either tap it close on it, you know, see what, see what happens on it. Um, and, you know, that, that, that curl back to the moving average is very, very important because it's going to test the trend. And if the trend really has persistence, it's going to pull away. And it's this pull away moment right here. 
where you know where we're testing the trend. That's my thing. Testing the trend, and then we're pulling away on this candle right over here. This candle pulls away from the moving average, right? Everybody sees that. That entry then becomes super high probability entry for uh, for a good for a good move. Now you could repeat this probably twice, but no more than twice because because then like everything else, trend gets tired. And if you try to repeat this like more than twice, your chance of getting stopped out becomes increment infinitesimally higher. So it starts out as like an 80% trade. Second trade probably is about a 70% trade. And by the third trade, it's it, it's barely 50. I'd say, you, you know, you're just a massive, massive um, decline in odds, in my opinion. So this is like an 80% trade. Then you have secondary kiss of the moving averages, right? And then again, again, this candle over here pulls away. The high doesn't touch it. So I'm short on the close of this candle. That gives me super smooth moves. It's... A, an amazing, amazing structure, but it requires two things, patience and kind of watching, you know, watching the trend um, on a intense level for, you know, if you're going to trade for two or three hours, those are the moments you want to come in. So um, that's one scalp method that I've been using that really works very well. Let me just kind of stop here, make sure everybody's clear, understands what I'm saying. By the way, just to show you, just to show you how the, the, the odds decline. This is a winner. This is a winner. We get to the third, third um, element. We're actually, let's say maybe this is a third element. It kisses here. This candle over here goes down. Maybe this makes, okay, let's say it makes, and then we get to the fourth element and it kisses here. This candle pulls away and it basically taps you right into, um, um, uh, into a loss. You know, you can see, you can just see how the odds degrade as you go down, just to show you them, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not making it up um, as you go. Um, so, you know, you have a similar, similar long variant here. You gotta be super patient. There's lots and lots of big movements. Market really feeling good, taps the moving average. If, if the trend is true, there'll be more to it. So this particular candle pulls away. We're on this candle. We get, we get long on, on the close of this candle, a little bit of a retrace. It actually would have made five points if you're trading it up. But, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, you know, the biggest, uh, I think, regret with, with, with these kind of setups is they're highly accurate, but they're small. They're small. You know, like, like I'm sure you're looking at it, you go, God, boys, you could have made 50, 60 points on these moves. These were, you were catching just absolutely amazing moves. And it's true. I could have done that if I had the personality to trade for big wins. Um, and you guys, some of you guys very well may have that. So it's, it, I'm leaving this, this, this particular technique in your hands to do as you want. But you have to know, you know what you're good at and, and how you trade. And I basically, there's only two ways to, to make money in the market. You either win big or you lose rarely. And I operate on the idea of trying to lose rarely, right? Trying to, trying to hit like 15, 16, 17 trades in a row let's see if i can actually show S &P reverse buy, trend down. bear with me a second here where can i get this um uh, let me see let's see if i can pull this up hold on custom period where's this thing no today let's see if today I can't pull it up. I'm sorry, guys. Um, my, my MT5 is really having a hard time. But the, you know, I'll show I'll show you tomorrow if I can. The whole idea is, you know, I, I was basically having like like you you're running like 15 out of 17, you know, 14 out of uh, 16 type type of runs for the day. That's what I'm aiming for. It's nickels and dimes, but that's pretty much what I do. It doesn't mean that you you don't have to you you can't take take my take my ideas and just completely flip them around into you know much bigger much better trades right it's all it's 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 all possible the the thing that i'm sort of trying to isolate for you is a technique the technique requires both patience and then super quick um ability 
to uh, to join the move once you once you, once you see the uh, um, the structure. Yeah. Um, so does that make sense to everybody? That's one way. Let me let, let me let me hear some yeses that you guys uh, understand what I'm saying. So the second methodology, and this one is much easier to implement because, because we have the tools. Um, you can go into sell mode or the buy mode to basically put it in a, in a, in a semi-automated fashion. The second methodology that I like to use is, is um, the retrace methodology. And the retrace trade is super great on the one minute chart. And that basically, <clears throat> Again, also why it requires a little bit of patience, but, but um, just I, every time I doubt myself, I kick myself, um, I get pissed because I basically, every time I don't take a trade, I, I miss making money. So the retrace methodology is you have trend, price goes through the bands into the trend channel, right? Into the trend curve, right? And if it reestablishes the trend direction, so basically this is a this is a sell mode in our thing. It buy sell buy sell candle combo, boom, you get short. If you go into the trend mode, buy sell combo, you get short, right? Um, similar thing over here. One of the one of my most favorite trades, one of my most favorite trades, is to trade this setup through 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 the moving averages, because because in a strong trend. Um, price is going to burst through this and everybody's going to go, oh, it's a turn. And nine out of 10 times, it's not actually a turn. It will only be a turn if you get a, if you start printing more and more green candles and it becomes a V-shaped recovery. But if it goes through and then gives you a red candle, it's almost always a continu great continuation signal to come in, right? If it goes through, it gives you, it gives you a red candle. It's almost a good continuation signal for, uh, for moves. And this is, by the way, already the third or the fourth in, a, in the in the uh, trend cycle, so it's really literally the worst one, and still gives you um, um, yeah the red green tool is, is really good, right? So this is how I use my red green tool basically is into the trend curve by sell mode. I mean obviously if I'm if I if, if I'm if I'm a negative trend I'm going to be in sell mode. If I am in positive trend I'm going to be in buy mode. And so this is, you know, this would be buy sell mode right here. Boom, I'm, you know, I'm in. The key thing here, like everywhere else, is you want to be very mindful. And this is where I get sloppy, uh, or you start, you know, you start getting. Um, you either two things happen: you get greedy, or you, you know, you you uh, you get FOMO because you know you miss this one, and you're like, you miss this one, and you come in, and you go, oh, I want to do this one. You know, it, it, the, if you're doing the third in a series. You're setting yourself up for fail, right? You just basically you you're you're chasing you're you're wishing for profit instead of instead of trading for profit. Um, so the single most important thing is is to not is 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 to look at the maturity of the signal. If it's the first or the second signal, you have an eighty percent chance. Um, if it's not, you you really you know you got to ask yourself, do I want to trade a sixty percent chance trade? Um, and I certainly don't because the other thing that I do. I don't think it's necessary, but I do this because because um, I find that in, in especially in Nasdaq and fast markets, I need it. I trade with a re, you know, very very bad risk reward ratio. I trade with a with a five twenty. Now, as I said to you, I'm hitting fourteen out of sixteen. Um, what did I hit the other day? I can't pull this up now, but let me see if I can see it. Let me just count it. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven out of two. Okay, that's that. Like so far this morning is eleven out of two. Still, still, that's you know, like basically, I guess eleven out of two is is, is you know, if if I'm sloppy, that's right. If I'm a little bit more practiced, I should I should be, hopefully, like fourteen out of fifteen that's on my focus. Right. That's but fine. that's you know that that's the point. The point is that you um. Um, if, you, if you trade the way I do, you have to be super disciplined in select selectivity, which of course I'm not as much. But I, but I, you know, I'd rather give myself that that room because overall I'd rather be, um, I'd rather lose rarely 
then win big because I'm never going to do win big. So I have to create strat, you know, positive expectancy strategies that give me, um, you know, the payoff that I want. So, you know, those are the two ways that I like to trade this now. So let's just take a look at what's setting up here. Um, so Dow turned positive trend. So did the DAX. NAS is still curling around. Um, so, you know, it's early. We, 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 yeah, the, the problem is with, with the new way of trading is I really have to be so much more patient. And I'm certainly, I'm definitely not going to be that patient in, uh, in live trading, you know. Um, and I'll, you know, and I will, you know, uh, play like, for example, let's play this right now just for fun, right? Because we have a pull away thing. This is not my perfect setup. It's early in the trend. Um, the trend can always fail because 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 it hasn't really come back and tested it. But worthwhile a shot. How come did my thing not work? Oh, cancel. God damn it. Ah, never mind. That would that would have totally worked. I, I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that, guys. Um, that should have that should have been a positive trade. Um, because you know, here you go. Here you go again. It pulls away from from uh, trend. Let's just. I'm gonna just beat myself up again. Let's let's see if if it extends. Probably won't because this is a perfect example of. Um, you know, when I do bad things, which is, I'm like, oh, I had the trade, it didn't work, I'm going to force the trade, because, um, because I still want, I still want to demonstrate the concept. So I'm, I might eat this, but maybe I get lucky, maybe we get we get an extension for five, we'll see. Um, it's a terrible entry. The entry should have been here, because that was the pull away trade. But, you know, maybe I get a little bit more, this is just an, an example of how trend extends. If you get higher, you know, if you get a pull away from moving averages, and sometimes, sometimes, you know, you know, I'm fighting trends, I'm fighting, I'm fighting spreads, I'm fighting everything, and, and, I, and I get lucky, and I get lucky um, only because, again, this methodology, I just kind of wanted to demonstrate the methodology, um, usually is so strong that it, that, that it forgives a lot of stupid mistakes, but don't make the stupid mistakes, you know, don't, don't come in on those, on those things, I mean, you can, you can always test it out, but you can see the, the essence of what I'm trying to show you is that trend is actually pulling away from moving averages that little that little trick now the problem is that um during asia during slow slow volatility sessions the first pull away is usually the false pull away right um and also i guess during lunchtime us sometimes a lot of the, the first pull away is the false pull away i guess you know in the 10 o'clock hour when we are so we say have so much high volatility and so much continuity you could you could modify my idea and say, okay, you don't have to be super patient. You can just go, you can just go long here on the, um, on the move. Right. So, you know, German would have worked right now. I mean, let's just, let's just see if, if, if my, my proper thesis holds up, you know, we have uh, NASDAQ recurl, you know, curling back up to the, uh, to the upside. We'll see if it actually, um, if we can actually, you know, uh, cross a moving average, just turn positive trend, and then print a couple of, print the candle that that's a pull away from moving average to see. Okay, but you guys, are, you guys are getting the idea, right? Of, um, of what I was doing, right? So here I could, you know, I can do, I can go into the buy mode because the other thing is, sorry, I, this is, it seems obvious, but I didn't say it. Obviously, if the candle is red and it's still above the moving averages, you have zero interest in buying it. So like, you know, if this candle closes over here, I'm not buying this candle. You're not buying a candle that's red because that's, that's a, a, perhaps an early indication that, that the whole move is done, right? So I, am, I will always go into buy mode over here, I'll always go into the buy mode, which will prevent me from obviously triggering into a, into a stupid, um, uh, you know, red candle on the move. Now, a lot of times what happens is sometimes at the very last second, you get the red candle changing to green and that's positive. Um, still, like, like right now, you know, we, 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 let me just get a little bit bigger here on this and you can see we're getting close. Now, if this thing tags, 
the moving average, right? Tags the moving average, then the next trade is not what I you know. I don't want to be on the next candle because the next candle, um, well, you know, I have to see. Let's just let's just see because the critical thing is depending where the next candle starts, does does it pull away from the moving average? Does it not? There's a lot of you know a lot of things that I want to um, consider. But right now, you know, NAS is it can't even hold the um, um, the trade. But you know, we got 16, 17 seconds. This looks okay. If the next candle pulls away, I want to be. Oh, this is ah shit. Sorry, this is going to cancel me. Cancel this out. Sorry, because right now what it's going to do is it's going to put me into a trade on this candle. And even though that my trade might work, that's not the trade I I, I want. I mean, the trade the trade clearly works, but the trade that I really want is after this candle. So now I have to like actually manually um, wait for uh, for this thing to. Um, to actualize itself. Like this would have been, you know, this would have been a good entry on the, uh, on the Dow, but I'm just, I'm just focusing right now on the NAS um, because I want some proof and it's got, you know, it's, it's really, really pulling away. So getting a little bit of short covering, let's see if we can, you know, if, if, if that short covering uh, stands. One of the things of course that happens is sometimes you get such a big, big move that you get, a, you know, you're gonna get volatility um squeezes going down and you have to be super patient i can't even even if i'm buying at the highs i'm going to be super patient i'm only going to buy with like five six seconds in, in, in the move so now i'm in the move let's see if i can get the uh, the, the five the five my way and um you know it's going to pause because this is a big big extension and let's see if it can go my way I was going four you know i was going three let's see if you can go five and there it goes and, and, that, and that's that's the trade that's the trade um, that you kind of want to handicap. Um, now, what's cool is I actually, you know, I've been I've been working on this, working on this, working on this kind of adamant that you need that you need a tag of the you need to for the for the trend to test itself. And I think that that's very much true in off market hours. But if we're trading the high liquidity, the high liquidity hours are are like the ten to 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 um, noon and you know, 2.30 in the afternoon to the close. Those high liquidity hours, when you get, when you get the, the change of trend, you could just go right, you know, just go with, with, the, with, the, um, with the momentum. And just go straight up, straight up with, the, uh, with the momentum and run the volatility. So um, anybody take those trades, either on NAS or on uh, um, the CFDs? Because, you know, those are, those are all qual quality trades, quality trades, qual quality meets. There's a, there's a restaurant in New York called Quality Meats, a restaurant chain actually, Quality Meats, which is like one of my favorite steakhouses. And they have like, they actually have a variant called Quality Italian, which is really one of my favorite steakhouses uh, because they have like a, like a, it's a steakhouse with a, uh, with like an Italian motif to it. It's really, really good. So if you guys are ever in New York, I highly recommend, recommend that chain. So this, this was Quality Italian Quality Trades. Um, good job. Everybody got, got the fives. So the point is, again, um, there are two components here. There's the setup, which I think, in my humble opinion, and I'm, I'm not kidding you, I'm not kidding you, requires at least 500 trades to internalize well. And to do uh, and and to do properly. So what does that you know what does that mean to everybody, including myself? It means that you trade on the smallest possible size, and you do not care about profits. The, you know you, you need to internalize the setup so well that it comes naturally. That you're able to spot it. You're able to avoid it when it doesn't you know when it doesn't show up, and you feel you know you need like I think. Four or five hundred instances of it to get um, complete confidence in its accuracy, right? So you got the setup itself, and then you have how you manage it, the variance, and everything else. And I think, like the biggest mistake, including myself, I, I do all the time, is that you want, you know, it's it's like a like what does it what does a dentist do or what does a surgeon do for the first three years of their life? 
they're like pressing on dead bodies or they're pressing on dead teeth, whatever, right? They're not like learning how to do root canals or open heart surgery. Even if they know all the rules for open heart surgery or the rules, right? They just, they, they're just practicing the mechanics, right? And what we love to do is, oh, we know the mechanics. Now I want to make money. And I think this is exactly where I know I certainly I get into trouble all the time. And I'm just really starting to realize that, that um, the single most important part is not the mechanics. The single most important part is um, repeating the mechanics five, 600 times. Because at least for me, that's how long it takes me. I'm a very slow learner to absorb the lesson. Um, and only once you have the mechanics comfortably um, you know, absorbed, can you start thinking about actually performing surgery on the market? Does that make sense to everybody? The beautiful thing, of course, with CFDs and everything else is that you could really practice on small sizes and, um, you know, and it's super easy. Um, so uh, what else? Uh, there's a couple of things that Dal Yen hit. Yeah, Dal Yen. Um, right, and, and, and Karen, Karen is absolutely right. Karen is saying that's the great thing about the one minute time frame. That's correct because we can have between 15 and 20 quality trades if we wanted to during the day. We can certainly have 10 quality trades over a period of three or four hours um, to practice. And that creates, you know, much greater, much greater ability to practice um, and, and, and do well. So, you know, focus on that. I, I, still, I still get swayed by FOMO, by bad execution, by pissed off lagging feeds on MT5, by, you know, a million different things that have literally nothing to do with the actual mechanics of the setup. Um, and those are, you know, and like 90% of my time is just spent learning how to not get upset about things that don't matter. Um, and then also to avoid, and as a result of that is I get upset and then I make a bad selection because I'm not focusing. And then when I make a bad selection, I get pissed. And then I try to, you know, try to, I, I try to, um, to undo it by adding. And like one of the things I did this week that I'm actually modestly proud of myself is I, is I made myself a vow that I wasn't gonna um, lever up at, at, at huge size. Um, and for the most part, I've stated, I've only gone to, to two times minimum size a couple of times this week, which is not, I haven't really kept my vow, but I've kept it good enough because instead of going five or 10 or 15 times my minimum size when I get pissed. Um, so, you know, do what you need to do. You guys know yourselves better than I do um, in order to, to, to combat your own demons. but the mechanics of the setup are beautiful. You know, the mechanics are super, super clean. Um, I don't know if, you know, I'm, I'm, we can, you, can, you can certainly, we can certainly automate the, uh, the turn trade, but, or, you know, or the retrace trade. The, I mean, the retrace trade is, is already automated with, you know, with a buy sell mode effectively, because that, that puts me right into a trade. The, um, the other trade, which is the pull away trade, I don't, you know, I don't know if Dougie can, can really automate that, that component for the app, but that's, that's something you kind of have to watch. But it's not hard because, um, especially if, you, if you're in the off market hours. And by the way, so here's, a, so, so like, you know, now we have the pull away trade. Now we're coming in for um, the retrace trade. And like, where would I, you know, you, you're watching both the Dow and the NAS. Um, this is okay. But not my like what I what I define by retrace trade is it's got to come into got to come into the trend curve. Like right now, it's just touching the uh, uh, um, the move. So to me, what I would do right now is I would effectively um, classify this formation as okay. We've had the trend, we touched the you know we touched the the, the moving average. If the candle after this is a green one that pulls away from the move from the moving average, I want to be long that candle. I want to be long that candle because that would tell me that we have a um, re-establishment of trend um, going higher. So, you know, now I need a green, like not this candle. This candle is going to complete, right? So this candle completes. And now I need, so this candle over here, clearly far away. If this candle stays green, basically if it stays green, then I want to be, you know, long on this, um, on the close of this candle. 
Um, we can actually, I have this chart over here, so we could, um, we could probably do it here too. I'll just put this over here. The other thing is the one thing that Doug is doing, and the other thing that I really do want is what I call the strong filter, which means it's got it's got to close within seventy percent of its high. So that is actually coming um, as a filter. If it comes in and like sort of closes over here as a weak high, I'm not going to buy it. But it's holding as a strong high with 13, 14 seconds left. So let's see, let's see what you know what we can do here. Okay, eight, six, five, four, three, two. Okay, I'm going to go long here. Let's see, let's see if I can. Um, if I can get extension on this move. It's a big extension on the candle, but let's see if I can get an extension on this move. Okay, good enough. So that got done. So again, Boom, 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 you know, tap, extend, go, um, and the scalp is done. Um, um, oh, so Karen, Karen, Karen is asking a great question. Hang on, let me, let me pull up this so everybody can see the question. Okay, what do you see is the question? So she's saying, why, aren't you, why am I not taking this, tr this trade, right? Why am I not, why am I not taking the, um, the trade? So the trade that I want to take, the trade that I want to take, Karen, is if it come, you know, and, and you're, you know, this is this is very interpretive. You're right. You could have taken this trade possibly, but the trade that I really like to take is if it comes in towards the red, you know, deeper into deeper into this category. The reason why I don't want to take this trade, um, I'm sorry, this is the German. German is a good example of this. German is a good example of why I don't like to take this trade because. Here's, you know, it tops, comes in, touches the thing. So the next candle is, if I took this to the long side, right? Maybe it worked, maybe it wouldn't work. The candle here is red. So it fails, right? It fails the move. And um, it could just simply go right back down in, 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 into the trend channel, right? Into the support channel. Um, most of the time, even when it does, I have a wide enough stop that it can kind of correct itself and, and move itself back. But the reason why I don't want to do it is because I'm really looking for a strong, you know, strong um, expansion to the upside. Like I know it seems counterintuitive that when something is really stretched away from the moving average, it's um, it's a buy. But most of the time, it really is a buy, especially for what we're looking for, which is that five extra points. It's not much to, um, you know, the key question is what's the highest probability of getting that five extra points? And it's usually always, um, you know, to the extension. One of the one of the ways, by the way, I kind of stumbled across this was because I'm notorious for trying to pick tops. So I am notorious for going, oh, um, you know, let me, um, I have to find like a really, really strong trend move, but like my, I'm notorious for going, oh, let me short this, let me short this. And then getting stopped out continuously as it would just pull away higher and higher. So, um, so that's sort of a convoluted long way of explaining, you know, why I did, I, I do do it the way I do it. Um, You know, so, you know, the German here, you could have taken this trade, but I would have preferred to take this trade. This, and, and by the time this, uh, this was showing, this really wasn't touching the, uh, the moving average, really pulled away. I would have rather been here than here. That's all. That's all. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to minimize um, the chance of a turn. That's all. Does that make sense? Where you really get a great retrace moment is if it touches the red, if it touches the deeper moving average and then fails, then you have a really considerable chance. Or if it goes through it, if it just does a big UE, you know, on the bottom, like for example, let's say this dumps, goes through the red, the moving, the, the trend is still up, but it goes all the way down through the red, one or two candles, then it goes green. That's that green candle usually is a great, great um, buy candle for, for a reversal back up, really for at least five points. You see what I'm saying? Let's see what um, let's see what uh, what the Dow is doing. Dow is doing nothing. And we're starting to come in a little bit deeper into the NDX. 
but not you know, not deep enough. Like I really like for me to get interested, I need to see the red candle tagged and I need to see a green candle, you know, form. Right now we're still kind of pulling away. And, th and the thing is, that's what you know, that's what's so fascinating when you start watching this, is you realize that trend, continuation, that which we seek all the time is actually pulling away. You know, it's like fly away, you know, my fly away, the, the, it's, it's the true visual representation of flying away. You're pulling away from gravity. And that pull away from gravity is what, um, um, is what makes you want to, what you, where you want to join the price because, you know, once it breaks the, um, the gravitational pull, it's just going to go higher. That's, you know, that's kind of how you want to look at it visually. Now we're starting to come in into, into, um, into the reds on the NDX. Um, and, you know, so let's see, we've got 47 seconds. Now I actually, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind putting up, you know, a buy sell mode, go myself into a buy mode. So this is probably going to end up as a, as a green can, as a red candle, which is fine. Um, and I'm going to be looking for some semblance of a, um, of a blue candle. And the only thing that, that is missing from this applet that we're, that we're working on is you need to make sure that, that when there is a, a, a blue candle or a green candle, when there's a strong buy candle, it needs to, to be a, it can't be like one of those really, it can't be a, a green candle that's really not a buy candle. I, cons I, I consider a buy candle where it closes in the top 70% of, um, of its range and the sell candle where it closes in, in the low 30% of its range. Right near the top or near the bottom of the candle range. Um, so that's the only thing you know you have to visually watch now, uh, but we'll have that automated. See, like this is a very weak buy candle if it stays here, but this is a good thing. If it stays here, if it's in the 64, 65s, I like that look. I like that look even more at 68, 67. You know, I like I like it staying strong in this in these areas because that's a that's a signal that, that you know with test of support, buyers want to see if they can they can run it back to the uh, 13, um, 1300, 100. You know, okay. So let's see, you know, let's see if they can run this. Um, you know. Uh, so tap here, 79, 75, 76, 77, okay. Watching the futures on my on my other screen here to see how that's trading, and you will get by the way with with the retrace trade. You may get you, sometimes you get a couple of you know a couple of consolidation candles. Sometimes you can get tapped out. On this, you know you might get tapped out on this on this volatility because the twenty may not be just enough to uh, to hold it here. Hopefully we won't. We'll see. You know we'll see if we can, if we can hold the twenty here. Um, so one minute one minute candle pop, pops up. You know, big big retrace. Um, so maybe not. You know, maybe this is going to tap me out. Yep, it's going to tap me out. And the retrace does not work on this one. It's you know, as I said, um, it's a great trade, but it's you know, it's eighty percent. Eighty percent doesn't mean one hundred percent. What may happen, we'll have to see. If this is if this is, let me just go back in again and make see if, see if it's a buy. This is just simply a classic. If this comes in, it's just a simply a classic volatility stop out. Um, because, because, you know, we're, the ranges today are so massive, um, and the vol is so hard that 20 is just not, not enough to, uh, to hold the position. But if this doesn't, if this doesn't end up, uh, blue or green, then there's no point in trading this. Let me see if this holds, this needs to hold around, I guess, 71, 72. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see if this was just a volatility clip um, on the move.
And it clearly was, you know, so, you know, we just, we, we got clipped on a volatility, um, but the, you know, the idea works and, you know, there works for another 10, 10, 15 more points. So, it, you know, it, that's just the way the ball bounces on a high volatility day, but the, the principle still stays the same, that you generally get um, at least one wave up. It, it, what I was gonna say is visually what you see here, for those of you who are like surfing or anything else, is wave crest, wave crest, wave crest. And you just try to trade the first two crests of the wave. After that, you know, you kind of let it go, let, let, let the trend go um, and let it be, okay? Um, now it gets really interesting. Like, like this is just super interesting to me because now I'm just fascinated because so no, I was gonna say so this is a this was a really interesting battle candle between the, the buyers and the sellers. It didn't quite like the buyers try to run it up. Clearly, the sellers have control. And now I think it's probably gonna unless this candle turns turns um green or blue, um the sellers are going to start to, it's going to start to distribute um, as far as price goes. But when, let's just, I'm actually curious to see how, how well this trades. The Dow is trading actually much better uh, than NAS and it's holding, you know, it's holding bit a little bit, a little bit better. On the Dow, by the way, so this is interesting. We can play this also. Uh, what do we got? 20 seconds, 19 seconds. If this thing, if this thing is a blue candle, it's a pull away from the moving average. Now it's already a third or fourth pull away, but it's got to stay blue first of all. So it's got to be like 33, 34 on the move. I'm actually going to do my, one more time buy on the uh, on the NAS, and let's see where I'm at on this. And I'll, okay, I'll I'll play on the Dow. Although this was really not a classic blue, it just kind of you know was it was a doji. But I'm playing. I'm just playing for fun on this. Um, the NAS. Uh, well, we'll see. Now, Nas is struggling. Every you're definitely struggling. You're seeing you're seeing the battle here. I was really thinking that maybe the, the buyers could run this, but let's see if let's see if I'm right. Yeah, I was right on this. I'm a little. I'm still struggling on the um on the Dow, but let's see if the buy if the Dow can can make it for me too. Come on, come on. Two, three, four. Ah, screw it. I'm just gonna take the Dow out. Um, the Dow was a Dow was wasn't a strong enough candle. But you see, you see the Nas. The thing is, this was a bit. It's a very much of a hesitation two-way market. So a lot of um, um, you have to, you know, uh, you don't have nearly as much confidence here as you would in a clean, clear pull-away trade um, that you typically have. But you still, I mean, you know, um, after all is said and done, the buyers are able to hold the bottom here, and and you, and you by buying all of these moves are able to to um, to uh, take advantage of them. I don't know if you guys caught any of these um, secondary or third pull away moves that I just did, but uh, um, but I hope you guys are using it for, for at least um, observational purposes. You got the second one, good job, good job. Um, and now, you know, and now the buyers are getting tired, right? Like, I mean, it's just getting tired. And this is the reason why I didn't like the, uh, <clears throat> The Dow, the Dow really did, didn't quite, you know, end up as strong as I wanted to. Um, it's actually interesting. I'm just, you know, one last. Well, we don't really. That's only six, seven seconds. So we really, we don't have a signal here. Um, and it looks like Mark, you know, market's kind of getting tired. But you can see, like, if you're trading the Dow and you're trading Nas, and you do have a strong trend, like, you know, you have a, like, you're gonna get when you get into these, um, into these two, three hour trends, right? When you get these two, three hour trends. The opportunities on the one minute chart are like three, four opportunities per trend. As long as you are disciplined at choosing, you know, the right entry, right? Like choosing the entry where, where it's really gonna work. So you, like this, if we stay at these levels, it's a great entry. If we, if we start coming back down, that's not a great entry. So we're gonna do one more thing on the Dow here <clears throat> because it's, um, if it's whole, it's gotta hold at this, you know, 35, 36 levels for me, but I still got 15, 16 seconds, which is a lifetime and uh, this, and it's not, and it's not. You see how it's like, it's fading. And so, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not loving it. And like, it's not in the, in the, it really needs to, ooh, look at the spreads. Jeez, I didn't realize the spreads are so huge. Okay, this is good. So I just went, oh, no wonder, no wonder I can't make money on the Dow in this thing. The spreads on this thing are massive, Jesus. Um, okay. So, okay, so let's, you know, I'm in because this, this is legitimately 
clean candle. But again, um, this may be a situation where I'm just my my stops are just too small given the spreads and everything else. But we'll see. Wow, I didn't realize it was like a two and a half point spread. It should be like a like a point spread in this liquidity. It's really a horrible spread here, but whatever. S&P by trend up. So we'll see if, you know, this, this is obviously general market tone. If the general market tone can kind of lift, because everything seems to be trading in, in sync here. So obviously here's the NAS starting to, to, uh, to pull and hold support. If NAS starts to pull up, Dow should hopefully pull up. Uh, you see that the, the DAX is, is pulling higher. Everything is, is all very correlated today. Let's see if we can get the move. One, two, three. Oh, man, I, I hate the Dow. I'm getting out of the Dow. Okay, I, I hate this trade. I hate this instrument, but like it should work. You know, it, will it, will it, you know, I don't know, but I'm blowing this out because it, 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 it should have it gone five, six points higher. It usually always does it after I close out the trade. But for now, two, you know, two minutes, no, no movement up. The, the NAS is also kind of fading. Goodbye. Um, the, the most important thing was just sort of show you the, the principle um, of the trade. Um, this obviously works super, super well when you have a strong continuity move. Right now, because first of all, this is this, remember on a, on a bigger time frame, this is a reflexive move, right? Where's the reflexive move? Uh, oh no, not on the Dow. I guess on the Dow, on the Dow, it's 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 actually a, almost a full reversal move. I thought it was a reflexive move, but on the um, on the Nasdaq, um, it's really a reflexive move because we we haven't even come close to uh, Nasdaq really really crashed. So if you're looking at this from a bird eagle's eye point of view, um, for this trend for this to become a V-shaped recovery back up to uh, you know. To, to pre-market opening highs, you need to really start breaking these levels over here. Um, and so far, not so much. Although as I speak, I wonder. S&P reversal. Nah, nah, Trend up. Dow is doing nothing. Um, so that, you know, um, it, didn't, uh, it didn't quite extend over here. But you know, when you build a strong, I'm just, I wonder if I can find a strong trend. I never looked at this on the Dow in, in like a deep, uh, let me see if I do this. But you get, yeah, here, you know, here you see like a strong continuity trend, sell, right? Uh, great sell, pull away, another great sell, all those things. Here's, here's, a, here's what I mean about the, here's the kind of continuity trend we like to see big, big move, tap up, right? Up, up. That's the continuity trend we, we have where it's pulling away from the moving average here. Right now it's just consolidating. Um, so, we, you know, we left, we see now it's consolidating and turning, right? Um, in many ways, this setup doesn't become interesting again, until and unless we can hold the 44s on a closing basis, if they hold them over here on a strong basis, then yeah, maybe we have a maybe we have an opportunity. In the meantime, let's just do one last thing, which is see if we can go into buy sell mode. Because um, we, we're coming into the uh, into the trend support area, um, and again, I like to do this on Nasdaq much more than I like to do it on Dow. But it's giving me the opportunity on on the Dow. Let's see if the if the Dow. Um, validates the, the trade. So we have a red trade, got about 15, 16 seconds. So probably it's gonna be a red candle. Only if we get a, um, a blue candle, either on this one or on the next one. I'm actually shocked that this is gonna turn blue. I don't think it's gonna turn blue, it's turned red, yeah. Okay, so we, it, it, needs, it needs a couple of more uh, profit-taking consolidations. This is either going to be support here, or they're going to start sh sharply give, giving up and just start selling it off hard. 
but let's see if we can get a um, one final um, support by candle here. So still red. Okay, let's see. Like this is starting out as a green candle. Let's see if it can hold. Man, the Dow. I, I hate the Dow. I'll be honest with you. It's such a such a slow moving um, instrument in some ways. But um, let's stay true to the setup and see if the setup uh, um, gives us the uh, uh, the trade. Ten seconds to go, and again, I don't have the the candle filter. So if this thing comes in like this, I'm going to cancel it because this looks like crap. I'm canceling it. So um, it may still work, but why? You know why I don't like this candle? And this it usually a lot of it, with a Dow, it, it almost inevitably works. It's always the funny part. Um, it's because we didn't close um, in the seventy percent. Like we didn't close on the strong part of the uh, candle, right? And so whatever bounce back we have, which is which actually, you know, I guess for the Dow, which is a very perverted instrument, kind of doesn't follow momentum. It always seems to fake, fake the auto momentum. That would have worked. Um, but I, you know, I just didn't love, I, I didn't like the, uh, uh, the way the candle looked here. Um, on the other hand, you know, um, don't want to, you know, don't want to press again. Let's just, you know, let's just see if uh, I'm going to give myself I make, am I going to make the mistake of chasing it here? Let's see. Let's see. We'll give it a shot. No, it's not good. I don't like it. All right, forget it. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, not setting up. Uh, it's fine. Uh, Would have worked, but I just don't like the way the key. The, I don't have a feel for the uh, for the Dow. It would have actually worked. I mean, all, all of this would have worked. I should have just simply let it play out. I think I need to just simply let all this stuff play out um, because I'm, I'm really not used to the Dow. I've been watching the NASDAQ the whole time. I really need to, um, to do this with you guys more often in the room to, uh, to fully absorb this. And I'll be doing this with you just, just like you guys have been doing this with you. We'll do this over and over and over again. Maybe by, by the third or the fourth week, this will become so semi-automatic that we can just uh, clip it continuously. But you get the idea. You know, My apologies. Sorry, I pulled, I pulled the... Uh, I pulled out of the last second, but uh, um, I don't know if you guys, if any, if any of you guys stayed with the move. The, the German, by the way, was a much stronger, much better, cleaner move. Um, you know, and we had some, 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 some good, nice moves here. Which this is another thing that I really like is that is that this is a very um, instrument agnostic setup. It, it's kind of so diagnostic that you can apply it to almost anything that you uh, you have on the charts, and it should work pretty well. You got the DAX because you, you, Connie always trades the DAX. The DAX was perfect. DAX was a uh, was trading really, really well. Jesus, is that right? So DAX trading, are they tra they're trading DAX too wide, right? And they trading four. This is trading like three wide. That's fucking ridiculous. All right. Um, yeah, the spreads are really a lot of volatility today, so the spreads are really, really high. Um, oh, our friend the Nasdaq. Is actually trading well. You know what? Okay, should I, should I fool around with my friend the Nasdaq? Okay, uh, I'm chasing it. I really, really, really chased it. Really, really, boom! But I got it. You know. Um, so you know, you saw what I was doing here. We had a pull away candle. I was a little bit late, but you see, like, um, we're in a high liquidity time. We cleared all of this um, garbage over here. The buyers beat the sellers. We started pulling away from the moving average. This, you know, entry over here was good. So you know, one last. Five bit on the on the NAS. I know I know 
you know, probably most of you did not catch it unless, um, unless you, you, you saw it out of the corner of your eye. But this is my whole point is boom, boom, boom. We can see these things uh, all the time. Um, and that's gonna give us lots of opportunities to practice as we, uh, uh, as we work the setups, okay? Hope you guys really like this because uh, this took a lot of, a lot of <laughs> trial and error for me to, uh, um, to catch up. Um, any final words, anything else on your mind, guys? So I think, do, did, I, did I treat uh, the DAX today at all? I think I did, right? Did we trade DAX? Let me look. Where's the DAX? NDX333. Did not trade the DAX. Maybe I did. Nope. No, I did not trade the DAX. Okay. Oh, well. I thought I traded DAX. Should have traded DAX today. Okay, so it was just just the Dow and the um, uh, and the Nasdaq. Okay, not bad. Um, everybody good? Karen, did Karen, did you uh, did you trade the Dow or did you, did you trade the DAX or the Nas? Cheryl, how, did you catch any of those Nases? NAS, yeah, I know, I know. You know, if you're trading futures, it's only NAS. Everything else is for wussies, right? Um, I try, you know, I, even, I, try, I tried like today this morning, I got in, I started trading the, the uh, S&P, the ES, and I was like, oh, you know what, screw this, I can't deal. Um, um, and actually that's another thing, by the way, so this is, this is you guys that do this naturally, it's my last piece of um, thought for the day today, is so, Connie kind of likes the DAX. She likes the NAS. She's super good at that. Karen likes to trade the Dow and, and the NAS. Um, you know, Cheryl obviously trading NAS. Focus on one or two of your most favorite instruments and refine the setup on that instrument. Don't be a jack of all trades, master of none. You know, I every time I deviate from the NAS, it's, it, it's never productive. I think sometimes I win, sometimes I lose, but it's never productive. You really want to just master the setup on one instrument, because if you master it on one instrument, you won't master it on all. That's the thing. Um, but if you start deviating, every instrument's got its own little, you know, idiosyncrasies and its own little idiotic changes, and you and you start screwing around with a setup instead of just trying to actually understand how to apply the setup to that particular instrument. You try to you try to adapt, um, you try to modify the setup instead instead of, um, of modifying to the instrument, you know. And that's, uh, that's the, the, the big mistake. So that's it, guys. Um, yeah, not too many. I, I literally just, you know, one. One is good. One is good for me. That's it. All right, my friends. Um, everybody have a great day. Good day today. I mean, like, I, 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 I can't even count it. But I think, you know, we definitely did about 20 in NAS. I mean, we, we, did, we did one clip out. But even with a clip out, um, um, I think I picked it, picked it all up on, on the, on the uh the secondary trades that at least five or 10 on the, on the Dow. So, you know, 20, 30 points, this much faster kind of a, you know, cleaner scalping trend, especially in the 10 o'clock hour when we have, when we have uh, more durable trends will hopefully give us five, six, seven trades per session um, in a clean, you know, uh, highly distinguishable manner. So that'll be good. And that'll hopefully um, um, keep us going. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Everybody practice and have a good time. Any thoughts, always come back to me. Um, same time, same channel tomorrow, guys. Everybody have a good day. Bye-bye.